The following program is a UWTV classic. From the University of Washington in Seattle, upon reflection with Al Page. Our guests are David Horsey and Brian Bassett, editorial cartoonists for the Seattle PI and the Seattle Times. Brian, what's the difference between a political cartoon and a cheap shot? It all depends, I think, on the personality of the cartoonist and, and how far in, in good taste he can take a point. Show us how you might do a cartoon and turn it into a cheap shot. It's been a while since I drew, I've drawn Dixie Lee Ray, but um, <laughs> I can remember I did a cartoon with Dixie Lee Ray. This was about eight or nine years ago, and uh, quick Dave helped me out. What does she look like? Just draw a big round circle and put eyes. That's, well, right. and and. Um, And I think uh, where a cheap shot might be, uh, well, in, nor in good taste, it might be to draw Dixie Lou Ray like this. A cheap shot would be to do it out to here. But uh, little arms over here. Do you ever think about whether you're drawing in reasonably good taste or you're taking a cheap shot? To a degree, to a degree, because I think when you're doing a political cartoon, uh, you know, your, your main goal is to be opinionated and to get your point across how you, however you can do that. Most of us tend to work with humor. We use that as our vehicle. Uh, but there are some times where you, you do get a little more vicious. You, you might be a little more involved uh, with the subject. It might be something you care a little bit more about or a particular incident that you really want to portray. And but there have been times we've, we've drawn terrorists and gone maybe the, the extra mi mile to show them being extremely vicious or yeah. we've we've d drawn politicians and accentuated something about them that uh, you know we think is it gets that across Dave can a political cartoon be effective if it doesn't have sting it's so dependent on the subject uh, I think most of the time you need that sting that extra element because what you're drawing is is not a portrait of someone. You're drawing a portrait of what they're about or uh, the issue that they're involved in. Or, and so, like Brian said, if you're drawing terrorists, you're not literally drawing a person, you're drawing a, a symbol for terrorism. Draw terrorists, the terrorist of your choice. Yeah, well, usually the eyes are a little wild. This is sort of a Ralph Steadman version of it. And uh, hair flying off. Again, while you're doing that, are you thinking I'm going to draw the sucker with sting, or does it just come out that way? Well, I mean, I think before you even go into drawing it, you think, what am I going to, what do I want to say? And usually you want to, most of the time, you're, you're saying something very negative. You're saying, <laughs> this person is, you know, if, it, if it's terrorism, you're talking about uh, uh, someone who, who lives by violence, which, which automatically is... Uh, something I don't really approve of, at least in family situations. Um, so, you know, the sting is automatic. I mean, the sting is in what you want to say. Uh, you want to say, I disapprove of this, and this is why. This question with respect to what you're trying to say, can you really say anything meaningful in just a picture and a few words? Sometimes. I, I'm one who's uh, I've grown to uh, realize the limitations of this, but sometimes if, if it's the right issue and something you can say with absolute clarity all you need is a picture in a few words or maybe just a picture and it, it's you can say it more meaningfully than uh, a news story or an editorial brian, but that's not i don't know if that's always the rule brian is pondering this question no you know it sort of brings up um how you put together a cartoon and and, you know, I've, I've had people say, gee, the, you know, I think the best cartoon is the political cartoon that you know, has no words whatsoever. But that's not a rule you can, you can go by because I always feel that the cartoon and the subject and the situation dictates how you're going to present it. You know, I think some of the best cartoons I've seen are ones with many words. And, but, you know, it's always that image that sticks in your mind. So, yes, you know, and since it is a visual art form, we try to convey our message in the drawing. But... Uh, uh, you know, I think there's, 
the cartoon sort of almost, as silly as this might sound, it almost draws itself um, how it needs to be presented. Let's take a case like starvation in Ethiopia. You can draw a malnourished child and get a, an emotional response, but really have you added anything to the solution to the problem? And on top of that, other factors involved with it, you know, uh, a corruption and, you know, the, you know, the food not getting to where it should be and, and the civil war that's going on. That's a good question. A lot of times we do cartoons on inflation or the economy, but do we present any solutions for how to solve uh, the deficit? We do cartoons on the deficit. You know, we present a problem, but yeah. uh, do, we, do we propose how to, a solution for that? And the Ethiopian thing might be the same thing. I think as political cartoonists, we try to do a variety of, variety of things with subjects. Yeah. When, uh, I, when I first started doing this, I, w I was trying mightily to be profound every day, and I found it impossible because each issue is different. Sometimes you are just lampooning the news. Other times you're making a very strong, serious statement. And, and you just take whatever's there that day. You can't be profound every day. But are you trying to go for people's heads or are you trying to go for their emotions? What I, try, what I hope to accomplish with the cartoon is to just wake people up, just to raise some eyebrows. A lot of times let them, you know, uh, go forward with, you know, what, what they think should be done with a, a situation or, a, you know, a problem. It's real interesting some of the responses I think we get as cartoonists, how certain cartoons affect certain people. Uh, I've done cartoons where I thought, you know, I'm going to, you know, we're going to have to move out of town and whatnot, <laughs> and not a single letter comes in. A specific example. Anytime you do a cartoon on, you know, like, you, you want to say politics and religion, but we always deal with politics. But religion, as an example, do something on the Vatican ruling or on in the Hunthausen case uh, situation or a cartoon on uh, uh, in vitro, I mean, the, uh, the oh, getting back to the Vatican's ruling on in vitro fertilization, things like that. It's the cartoons when they touch people's values that get the most reaction, I think. Uh, so yeah. I can't give you specific cartoons but I can give you the subjects that tend to really... Uh, Although, there are times even when it's... I, I think that's generally true. Every once in a while you bump into an issue that you just are amazed at how... Uh, at a reaction, because it's some odd little thing out there that, that you... Again, give us a specific... Well, probably the, the most... The, the strongest example is one that happened when I first started the PI. I made... A, <coughs> I did a cartoon that lampooned the uh, Tacoma Dome. <laughs> <Gross. coughs> and. I got more letters on that than anything I've ever done. <laughs> and, you know, it was just a silly cartoon uh, poking fun at Tacoma, basically. But, heck, when you insult an entire city, you're bound to get letters. Do you know, I did a cartoon, and here's a, here's a cartoon which I thought, you know, on the, on the scale of cartoons that would get reaction, I thought it would get a minus 2,000. I did a cartoon <laughs> on, on putting, um, I said a few years ago when the Metro Sewage Treatment was proposing, I think, being, uh, putting, um, their plant in the uh, Inner Bay area, and down along there on Elliott Avenue, there's uh, mm -hmm. um, there's a putt putt golf course, and there's a U-Haul, a few things like that. And I did something on you know that they couldn't. It was all trashed out. It was like you know Super Aurora Avenue lights, neons, this and that, just just a mess. And I did a cartoon on the fact that you couldn't make it any worse. You might as well put it down there. I heard more letters from residents, you know, you know, residents who had been living in that inner bay area for, you know, 40, 50 years because I was attacking their neighborhood. Yeah. You know, to them that was the most, uh, uh, you know, important part of their life and it was more important, I mean, to them they were defending it far more than, than, than they would their country or an uh, invasion into Grenada or, yeah. you know, a president, presidential policy. I, I think so, the closer you get to home, whether that's in terms of their personal values mm -hmm. or literally their home, the more people react to cartoons. And most editorial cartoonists pride themselves on you know, slamming Ronald Reagan or you know, dealing with national issues. But actually, those are the ones that probably had the least effect of what we do. Dave, you've gone through these experiences. Does it make you more sensitive to the audience for which you're drawing, or do you just say, screw it, let the chips fall where they may? Most of the time, you say, screw it. <laughs> there, there are some occasions where you know, the, the people complaining have have a legitimate thing to complain about that you you just you've been insensitive or just didn't really think the thing through. Draw another cartoon and put it as a retraction on page seven. Uh, you never retract, but you hope you balance it out eventually. Uh, but most of the time, you know, every single cartoon I do, I assume there are a certain number of people that are going to love it and a certain number that are going to hate it, no matter what I do. So there's no way you can 
<laughs> respond to every criticism uh, because it, that's just part of the job. That's why you're there is to stir up trouble. You mentioned Ronald Reagan, and certainly political figures are popular for cartoonists. Do the political figures you draw have to be weird or funny, or do you have to be weird or funny? None of the above. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> you know, the people we draw, I think, really catch us off guard. There have been instances, and Jerry Ford was one, and where when he came into, you know, I mean, uh, became the president, uh, he had been sort of locked away in Congress for 30 years. You know, everyone said, oh, here's a guy. It's going to be very difficult to draw. He, you know, he doesn't have any real, you know, uh, strong facial features. Well, one, he turned out to be a terrific, terrific caricature. Like well, show he, us. Well, again, he's pulling, he's <laughs> yes, pulling yes. all these, uh, all these, uh, uh, the characters from the past. Well, Mike Peters' cartoons in Dayton, Ohio, it said, you, uh, <clears throat> it's hard to have a two-dimensional figure stumble. Well, <laughs> he said when you draw Jerry Ford, you draw Frankenstein, mm -hmm. and then you remove the stitches. <laughs> and really, that's sort of what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then he went on to become, you know, this 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 almost comic, and and you know, you saw the Saturday Night Live sketches with him always stumbling. I mean, these people almost turn into cartoons mm -hmm. before our eyes. There's very little we have to do. I think that's. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, the big differences that both of us do a comic strip between doing a comic strip and a polit political cartoon. With a comic strip, we've got to create all these people. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have to give them life. Mm -hmm. and with a political cartoon, they're already presented for us. I mean, there's, we almost can sit back and you know, put the pen down, go, mm -hmm. hurry up, go to work, so I can take a long lunch. And when you come back, the cartoon's done. You talked about Ronald Reagan. Brian, what is it about Ronald Reagan that appeals so much to cartoonists in physical terms? Can you show us? Dave, do you want to you take a first shot at that? Or? Yeah, well... You, you both do them, and I'm curious to see how you both do them and to see the similarities and the differences. Yeah, I, I suppose <clears throat> there's, there's so many elements. He's a great caricature because there's so many g good elements in his face. Um, you know, from sort of this beak-like nose. <laughs> it's kind of a little rooster th to his, his squinty eyes. And you know all the lines. It's just almost anybody can draw Ronald Reagan. <laughs> just you do so can draw Ronald Reagan. And you know these rosy cheeks. And I don't know what you call this, but this is what everybody does. This area between your nose and lips, which didn't an angel come down when you were born? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know the the kind of crooked smile. And then he's got. I don't know. Again, the, this lower lip is sort of prominent. And then just lines everywhere. <laughs> and it's funny, each cartoonist kind of picks out different things. And, and you know, one person's caricature uh, is very different from another's. And yet they all, everyone knows who they're drawing. You know, er, uh, his hair has actually changed radically through his tenure in, in office. He's calmed it down, but cartoonists are still drawing it up here. Mm -hmm. I just ran out of space, so I can't. He also has sort of LBJ ears, which I emphasized. So it, it's, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, just doesn't take long to learn how to draw. Someone like Gary Hart, for instance, is very hard. His face is a little too regular. Oh, I'm starting to get him. Oh, what a challenge. Brian, do you do Gary Hart? I just did a Gary Hurt last night. Yeah, he's, he's he is harder to do, but he will be, I think, easy. Okay. Can you show so us a little bit of Gary Hart? Oh. Uh, <laughs> do you start with the universal politician and work outward, or does each person hit you in a particular way? Oh, you know, one. Uh, you always develop your caricature. I mean, it's, it's always developing. Like Dave said, you know, with Reagan, he's changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so we'll probably, I always usually start with a nose. You're right, in and work out, but that's not anything. <laughs> You're just a nose kind of guy. No, well, I see my nose first. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, know, I do that too. Standing right out there. Like the place I don't know, start. yeah, it seems like the place. The nose is definitely the center of the personality. And the, you know, the, but uh, um, no, I don't know. You know, sometimes I, I start a little differently. You know, like with Reagan, I might start with his uh, nose. Yeah. <laughs> and then maybe next time I'll do his nose. So. <laughs> so it looks like uh, once you get the nose and hearts, the eyebrows are the, yeah. the thing that, that get you. 
After Hart dropped out, were you praying for him to come back into the race so you have some more material? We, we we're at our best, I think, or when the, the country's at its worst, you know, when somebody like a Gary Hart is running for president. I mean, we sit there and we go, gosh, this is an answer to our prayers. You know? Yeah, the deadline is here and I can make it. Yeah, we're now praying for Richard Nixon to run for the Republican nomination. But, but Gary Hart's kind of funny. Uh, speaking of ears, you know, he's got these, just these en enormous, actually, I'm, I'm making these ears a little too small, but... Uh, uh, what I think is funny about Gary Hardy is he always tries to cover up his ears. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> Just blow that hair, blow it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, that's good. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's one of those things where these, these people become easier and easier to draw as time goes by. When Reagan uh, came into office. I know cartoons were being almost overly kind to him and removing wrinkles. Yeah, right. you know, they, they, they didn't want to make the age issue a factor when they drew. And now it's like, throw one more in there, Dave. Yeah. Oh, oh, there are yeah. thousands that could go Just right one in. more. You know, it's yeah. like... Yeah. The, uh, Lines on his ears. Uh, that raises an interesting question. Do you lead public opinion or do you follow it? For example, if somebody becomes a joke, you have more license and then you'll become more popular. I once wrote a paper on this. <laughs> I, I think most of the time cartoonists think they're leading public opinion, but I think the fact is most of the time we're kind of right in there with everyone else and, and, mm -hmm. and one way or another reflect what, what the public is thinking, what the popular perceptions are. Don't be so modest. Didn't the president, call, modest. Modest. Didn't the president <laughs> call you up the other day to, to ask you about your opinion on the situation? Well, he does that a lot. But okay. Considering the president. Yeah, there you go. That, okay. I should, you shouldn't take it as well. That's it? That's the end of the pithy thought? Whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've drawn Ford, you've drawn Reagan. Essentially what you're drawing is white political figures. Uh, but on the other hand, you've drawn a terrorist, or we think about Jesse Jackson. When you do those people, are you open to charges of racism? Oh, absolutely. It, oh, I yeah. think <laughs> it's, well, Jesse Jackson, has reached a point where he's is such a totally public, almost well, not non-racial, but I mean he has he is there as a politician much more than a representative of his race now. So you can do lots of things with Jackson without causing as much trouble as you might otherwise, or as it did in the past. But it's difficult to do. Um, it's difficult to do blacks minorities. and other people. Yeah. It's very hard because no matter what you do someone is going to respond to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm always extremely careful. Mm -hmm. But even at that, someone is usually offended, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is an odd thing, because you... Uh, Our so job is to offend, but mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. Here, we, you know, we don't you know, pull any punches when we're drawing you know, these nice mm -hmm. you know, wasps we got here. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, hold, we go full, full board with Reagan's ears and you know, hearts here and his chin. But if we're drawing, say, black, for instance, we can't draw the lips too big. Uh, if we're drawing um, uh, a, an Oriental person, you know, we do the eyes too, too slanty then. So dealing with Japanese-American trade issues, for example, becomes a little bit tricky. I just finished a project you know, where I was in Japan, and before I went over there, I thought, I'm going to have to be drawing lots and lots of Japanese people. And I've got to figure out, you know, get beyond any sort of stereotypes I have in my head. Can you show us how you do it? Um, well, what I, I discovered... Look at a libel suit right here on the air. Yeah. No, it's, it's just that sort of you, you draw specific, specific people rather than sort of this generalized Japanese. Mm -hmm. Or like I had a crowd scene with, with a lot of Japanese, and mm -hmm. just like I would with, with mm -hmm. any group, I drew lots of different faces. And I think, you know, in, in the old days, the old-time cartoonists wouldn't have worried about that. They were just drawn in these sort of caricature... Japanese, but you know there are as many different faces in Japan as there are in the United States. And, um, you know, actually, this is uh, one of my cartoon strip characters. <laughs> uh, you know, an Oriental face is very subtle. There isn't anything that remarkably different, other than just slightly different eyes. Um, you know, you can. You do someone who looks like that, or, uh, you know, they're also, 
you know, Japanese faces more like this. And, and the trick is to avoid, you know, cliches and, and uh, you know, the old stereotypes. It's an There's, odd job because we sometimes yeah. need stereotypes to get a point across. But, a, but what Dave was saying, you know, uh, some of the criticism that we get, I think a lot of it is valid and we should be, you know, like I say, when drawing blacks and drawing other minorities, there's, there's nothing wrong about, the, you know, not holding back, but being a little sensitive with the caricature a bit. It is a paradox because people do respond to the stereotypes you draw, yet you're trying to teach them to move away from stereotypical thinking. Yeah. It's really, we get a lot of interesting, uh, we're sort of in an interesting conflict when we, uh, when we deal with the Middle East because when we draw Arabs, we draw Arabs with, say, big, news, big noses, <laughs> bermuses, uh, beards, and, they, and people say, well, that's the way you draw terrorists. I know, are you saying all Arabs are, you know, are terrorists? And I can remember drawing Menachem and Begin and someone saying, you're drawing a st stereotypical Jew. You know, he's got the big nose and, the, and these eyes. I'm going, I'm drawing Menachem and Begin, you know? Uh, um, so, but, uh, but it's true. It's like when we, we've done cartoons on the, say, the, the oil glut, we, you know, we draw the Arabs with, like I say, the, how we think an Arab looks, and we forget that there are many Arabs there in three-piece suits and who, who don't fit that, that mold. The, the, the problem with paradise. that is, okay, so you draw an Arab in a three-piece suit. Does anyone know that this is any different from a Frenchman? Or, there are all these cliches and stereotypes that are very hard to avoid. So I guess what you try to do is avoid them as much as possible, but sometimes you just say, hey. <laughs> yeah. But on, on the flip side of that is I think cartoonists didn't even think twice about drawing stereotypes. Now there's been enough, not pressure, but enough yeah. criticism brought, to, brought forth in the way we portray them that we, we are being a little bit more sensitive to the way we portray them. But I think there was a point where cartoonists didn't think twice, and there's been a lot written. There have been films about it and, yeah. and uh, Broadway plays. And, Let's change the subject and talk a little bit about your syndicated cartoons, which are not political. Uh, Boomer's Song, Adam. Uh, draw us a bit from Boomer's Song and Adam. It seems to me that this is an area where you can be happy and let the other side of your personality come through. I see with Adam, I start with the head first and then I throw a nose in. Where do I start? I think I still do noses. Yeah, you touched on a... Uh, point, and I think that's one of the things that that makes doing a comic strip fun for us. It's sort of like that that uh, Alice in uh, Wonderland. Uh, it's sort of our looking glass. We can we can come home and uh, just change gears and not be the you know not have the weight of the world on our shoulders. Uh, you know, not have to make a, a comment. I had people when I first started the comic strip say, "Gee, you know, how come you're not you know." treating Adam like Doonesbury would as right. a house husband. You know, why aren't you making some great political statement? You know, you I said, because I don't want to. You know, I'm a cartoonist as well, and I want to have something that's a little bit different. I don't want to yeah. live in this, uh, uh, this very serious world all the time. But, um, and for that reason, it almost makes doing the political cartoons more fun, because we can, we can change gears. We have an outlet. You know, we can go home and do this and come, come back to work and be the, you know, outraged, uh, political cartoonist. One of the things that's interesting about Adam is that Adam is always smiling. Even when the underwear is piling up outside the washing machine, he's smiling. Adam has my personality, and, and I'm sure I get angry, but I think that's one, sometimes I have a hard time separating Adam from myself, uh, is because when I draw Adam, I see myself in his situation. And I, and I, I do, I put my feelings into, into, into his, uh, a little uh, sketch here, and um, you know, sometimes he probably should react more in an anger to angry tone. The Boomer's song is interesting because I think the humor is a little bit more subtle. It's sort of looking at the world and finding the world a bit crazy. Yeah, I, it reflects me very much, and I, I'm... That's my line. Not a, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, how can you avoid it? Yeah. Uh, Jim Davis is really a cat. <laughs> That's right. It's, you know, it, it all comes out of not necessarily my experiences, but there are lots of things in it. They're kind of close to it. I'm dealing with uh, sort of the angst of a generation. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, and so 
-hmm. I'm trying to, I'm not just trying to do simple jokes, I'm trying to deal with, you know, personal issues. Uh, anything from, you know, midlife crises to, you know, just being dissatisfied with your job to being tempted to have an affair, you know, all sorts of things that skirt the edges of what How much research the comics pages, <laughs> well, you know. Forty years from now, are you both going to do geriatric songs? Assuming <laughs> my cartoon strip is still around, I, I plan to, uh, to age these people in real time. So, yeah, in, if I'm here in 40 years, they'll, they'll be playing golf and listening to the Stones on, on their Walkman. One last question for both of you. Can you improve? How can you get better? Are you getting better? You know, it's easy to get into ruts and to doing the same old thing all the time. And you've got to keep pushing yourself to draw better, to think better. Uh, you can always be better. And, I, you know, I've got lots of areas where I know I can improve, and I hope it happens. You have to please yourself. And I think this is a type of profession where it's very easy to get sort of stale, especially in your drawing and in your thinking. Uh, one of the reasons I, you know, many reasons we were both doing comic strips, but it's another challenge for us. And uh, it's, a, it's a job of lots of challenges. I think to the outsider, it looks uh, amazingly easy, you know, to pick up a, a pen and to be able to sketch something. And for the most part, it is kind of simple and it is very enjoyable. But there's a certain degree of work and a certain degree of uh, sort of, you know, stretching yourself that goes into this. And so that's, I, I think, as we both, you know, keep at it, we, we, we both need to be satisfied with our work. And, you know, I know that's the thing that motivates me, sort of the fear of embarrassment, you know, that I'm not putting out the best work I can and, uh, and that I want to. Our guests have been David Horsey and Brian Bassett, editorial cartoonists for the Seattle Times and the Seattle PI. Upon Reflection. To see more UWTV classics, visit uwtv.org slash classics.